confirm, since he's talking about new politics and transparency, will he confirm and will he welcome that the OBR forecast that under the plans we put in place, unemployment will be lower this year, next year and the year after, and that borrowing will be lower this year, next year and the year after than we forecast in our budget. Will he confirm that and will he welcome it? What I can tell the Honourable Lady about the Office of Budget Responsibility, and first of all, first of all, First of all, shouldn't she welcome the fact that these things are now independently determined rather than, rather than fiddled in the Treasury? What the Office of Budget Responsibility shows is that the structural deficit is going to be £12 billion higher and the growth forecast that the Chancellor of the Exchequer produced at the time of the budget were a complete fiction. Harriet Farman. I can answer his question, although, to be fair, he's supposed to be answering mine. Yes. I do support the OBR. He won't say whether he welcomes the forecast that I set out earlier, but it's clear what he's doing. He's talking the economy down. He's talking the public yeah, he's talking the public he's talking the public finances down to soften the public up for cuts that he wants to make. But doesn't he realise that in doing so he's also undermining business confidence? How can that be right? What, what the right honourable lady and all members opposite have got to remember, never mind talking the economy down, they did the economy down. They left this country with a £155 billion deficit, the biggest deficit in our peacetime history. They're the ones who let the banks go rip, who told us they'd abolish boom and bust, gave us the biggest boom and the biggest bust. They were the ones who told us we were going to lead the world out of recession. Our recession was longer and deeper than others. They haven't told us one single penny of the £50 billion that they were going to cut. Not one penny. And do you know where they ought to start? Why not start with an apology? Harriet Palmer. Uh, Well, Mr Speaker, if he thought our spending plans were so bad... if 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 he thought our spending plans were so bad... Why did he back them right up till the end of 2008, praising them, Mr Speaker, as tough? One minute he's praising them, then he's causing them, calling them reckless. It's not so much magic numbers, it's a magic roundabout that he's been on. Yeah. Mr Speaker. Okay. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we all agree that the deficit needs to come down. But will he promise that in the budget next week he won't hit the poorest and he won't throw people out of work? Does he agree with us that unemployment is never a price worth paying? Well, Mr Speaker, the the figures were wrong and the jokes weren't much good either. Never mind the magic roundabout. What we're all enjoying on this side of the House is the Labour leadership election, although it is, by day, beginning to look more like a Star Trek convention. (laughs) What the... um, What the... uh, Beam me up. What What the Honourable Lady has got to answer is before the election, they set out £50 billion of cuts, but not a single penny aligned to a single programme. Not one pence of the 18 billion they were cutting off capital spending aligned to one single bit of capital expenditure. So before she starts challenging us about cuts, they should first of all apologise for the mess that they've left. (laughs) Second of all, tell us where the cuts were going to come to uh, under their government. And third of all, recognise that a responsible party in coalition is actually dealing with a deficit and the mess that they left behind. Sir Alan Hazelhurst. Yeah. 